the secret and dangerous network of hiding places known as the Underground Railroad. Detroit is uh, considered the last stop on the Underground Railroad. For over 40 years in the mid-1800s, all paths from plantations in the slave south to freedom in the north led here to Detroit, codenamed Midnight, the last dark stop before a bright future in Canada. Michigan and Detroit played a huge role and a lot of people don't realize. The tyranny of slavery is a painful part of American history, but the path to freedom along the Underground Railroad tells inspiring stories of true bravery, survival, and relentless determination. And Detroit was a pivotal gateway to freedom to Canada, a country that had already outlawed slavery for over 50,000 slaves. But what you may not know is the prominent black Detroit leaders known as conductors who risked the lives their own lives in freedom to smuggle fugitive slaves. Meet one of the descendants of a conductor proudly sharing her family's story in our Detroit history. Conductors uh, found a way out of seemingly no way. Ken Coleman is a Detroit author and historian. In Detroit, prominent men and women, many of them African American, but they were free. Business owners who had stature, equivalent of the mayor or city council or state reps. William Lambert was a prominent Detroit conductor and an unsung hero. His work was the roots of the first black Episcopal church, St. Matthew's in Detroit, the NAACP, black Greek fraternal organizations, and starting the first schools to educate black Detroit children. Author and family historian Christina Napier, born here in Detroit, is William Lambert's great-granddaughter, three times removed one of the second wealthiest black men in the state of Michigan at the time, purchased 40 false bottom wagons to help transport people between 1829 and 1862. Risking his own freedom and safety. They were always being looked for or hunted. He prepared a speech that he spoke before the Michigan legislature for freedoms for black men, for the right to vote to take the word white out of the state's constitution. Uh, he was that powerful. He spoke those words 100 years before the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Ever since I was a small child, my mother kept the stories alive. It fills me with so much pride. Physically hide slaves in his own home. That once stood near downtown at the corner of Larned and St. Aubin. Sadly, thieves stole the historic marker stole it for scrap, which is so sad. I mean, when I first found that out, I was enraged. No thought of what historical benefit they robbed. Attended the Detroit Public Schools for 13 years. Didn't know anything about William Lambert uh, until I was probably 30. I was able to take my young son there. I have a children's book that I've written about William Lambert so that they can make sure that, that the story continues. The story of George de Baptiste, another prominent black Detroit conductor, is at his home site marker. You may have driven past it, East Larned in Bobian downtown. He had the means to purchase a steamboat to smuggle countless slaves to Canada. De Baptiste pointing towards Windsor on the riverfront gateway to freedom sculpture in Hart Plaza. Did you know? Directly across on the Windsor side, there is the Tower of Freedom sculpture. Didn't realize that there was a second one uh, in Windsor. Ken actually discovered it while running past it in the Free Press Marathon. The first stop for food, clothes, and shelter on the Canadian side, the home of John Freeman Walls. Cheryl Garnett is his third great-granddaughter. Enslaved in North Carolina, he escaped to freedom on the Underground Railroad and built this log cabin. My great-grandmother was uh, born in a log cabin. And when she turned 100, the Canadian government uh, turned it into a historic site. The family maintains as a museum for tours, its chapel named after Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks used to go there uh, to visit, and she said that that was where she felt the most at home. We often talk about the ties that bind uh, in the African-American community. Uh, the sculpture, both in Detroit and in Windsor, ties that story together. And it's something that a lot of Detroiters don't know. 
like Greektown's Second Baptist Church, a hiding stop under its sanctuary, refuge for over 5,000 slaves. So the next time that you are in downtown Detroit and you see one of those historic markers, stop for an inspiring history lesson.